Here's a verse from Psalm 33, verse 1. Rejoice in Jehovah, O you righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. What does comely mean? Hey, look, here it is again. Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise ye Jehovah, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praises comely. Comely is an old word. We don't use it much anymore. In the 1200s, it meant decent or suitable. And later in the 1400s, it comes to mean handsome, graceful, pleasing in appearance. In Hebrew, the word is nave. This is word number 5000 in the Strong's, if that interests you. It is similar to the English usage of the word becoming, which means looking well, or aesthetically befitting. These verses mean that praise looks good on you. So I want to tell you a story. It's a pretty fictional story, the story of Menachem Mendel, the great hero to the Jews of Poland. He had been taken to the camps during the war, as had all the members of his little village, but somehow he had managed to escape after doing no little damage to some of the guards there by finagling with the armaments they were forced to make in the camp. After wandering through Europe for a few years, he suddenly appeared to his lunsman, now relocated in New York City. Some had left Poland before the war. Others had also serendipitously escaped. He came and told many harrowing stories of close encounters with evil forces, of narrow escapes, of kind Gentiles who had helped him, and of not-so-kind Gentiles who had double-crossed him. His friends were so happy to see him, they decided to give him a gift. Look, Mendel, they said, we want to do something nice for you. We want you should have some new clothes. Look at these schmatas you are wearing for a long time already. Fievel, the tailor, has volunteered his craftsmanship. The Rosenbergs will give fabric from their sewing shop. It's all set. Just go by Fievel, and he'll measure you. Menachem Mendel put up his hand. No, he said, I'm fine. I'm happy with what I have. It's okay. No one should go to any trouble or expense. With that, a roar of protest broke out among the townspeople. No, 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 you must have a new suit. Besides, Sadie and Izzy are getting married soon, and you will surely need a new suit, and you want to look nice for the wedding, don't you? No, what could he say? Menachem shrugged his shoulders and agreed. He went by Fievel the tailor, who measured him, and told him to come back in a week. After the week went by, Menachem showed up at Fievel's shop. There on the hanger was a fine-looking suit, the likes of which he had never laid eyes on. It was true that America was the golden of Medina. The finest of everything was here. Fievel handed him the suit and motioned toward the dressing room. Go, go, go try it on. So off Menachem Mendel went. There was a great deal of noise, rapping and clapping, and finally he came out, the suit still on the hanger. It's no good, he said. It just doesn't fit. Fievel's eyes lit up with fire. What? What are you talking about? I measured you. I made it for you. Go try again. So Menachem went back to the dressing room. Again, noises, cluffing and stuffing and slagging, and out he comes. The suit still on the hanger, his head hung low. Fievel, I'm really sorry. I have tried to put this suit on. I have really tried, but yoy, it just won't go. That does it, said Fievel. Show me what the problem is. You get dressed right here before my eyes. So Menachem took the suit coat off the hanger and slowly began to insert his arm into the sleeve. Fievel gasped, and then his voice melted. Ay, Mendel, he said, you know if you want that suit to fit, you're going to have to take your old clothes off first. And that is truly the way it is for us. Praise becomes us. It makes us look lovely before men and before the Father. But for us to wear this garment of praise with grace and honor, comfortably, so that it really fits us, we must first lay aside all the negativity, the emotions, the stinking thinking, the disappointments, the disagreements, the regrets, the disillusionment, the dissatisfaction, the disenchantment, those things that eat at us and prevent our true and full participation in life with Messiah, who has provided us with the clothes for the coming wedding. 
It is written in Isaiah 61.3, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah, that he might be glorified. But Paul has also said in Philippians 3, 12 through 14, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Messiah Yeshua has also laid hold of me. Brothers, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Messiah Yeshua. Oh, I'm glad for morning.